Hello, folks. Well, we have a beer tonight that is fairly well known, and it's called Light Miller Light. Originally called Light by Miller, but now it's Miller Light. And I see that you, Jeff, Brist, the Brister, you have the 18 ounce bottle, hey? Yes, I do. I got a couple of 18 ounce bottles for a buck each from a local gas station. Great deal. I was at Walmart, and I think I bought this for a dollar fifty. Not the greatest deal, but uh, you know. Get what you get. Um, I will say that the Milwaukee Best Ice that I bought for a dollar fifty each was a good deal. That was yesterday. Y'all saw that, didn't you? Yeah, I seen that. I never got to try it. How is it? That was a quart can. Ooh, dollar forty nine for a quart can, and I bought that's two. Of, that's a lot of beast ice. Yeah. Tried drinking one. <laughs> um, how is it? Oh, I think it would go very well with some barbecue. That used really spicy barbecue sauce, you know? Um, yeah. Well, anyway, let's look at who we've got here first. From down in Louisiana, the Sportsman's Paradise, or the Bayou State. Uh oh, I'm hearing an echo. Where's that coming from? Where's that coming from? Don't tell me it's me. Let me see. Let me see. It's Keone again. Keone, you might have to fix that, buddy boy. Oh, it's me. <laughs> Let me mute you, and we'll see. We'll see. Oh. Okay, he's got that Mac. Mac is great, except for any applications. Now, um. But it works for me. Okay. <laughs> I'm just ripping on the world of Apple now. Um. But down in Louisiana, we have myself, Louisiana Beer Reviews, and we got Brandon, who we haven't seen in so long, but he has to work. And people's jobs are more important than looking at beer brands, believe it or not. And then uh, from uh, and also from the south, we have the Brister. He's very famous in the world of drinking. So um, he's with us tonight. And from out west, we have Eric Anderson. From the world of avant-garde art, <laughs> and and then we have Keone, who's with uh, California Beer Reviews, and back east we hey. have from one of the first states and first American settlements of Europeans. We have Eric Anderson. I mean. Uh, <laughs> we have Thomas Meadow, Eric Von Fugger, excuse me, I caught myself. Oh. With Massachusetts Beer Reviews. Now, first of all, and then I'm going to ask y'all a question. Okay, we know that Meisterbrow, right, came out with their L-I-T-E, their light, Meisterbrow light. Oh, I'm sorry, light from Meisterbrow around 1967. 96 calories, blah, 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 4.2% alcohol. It was the new diet beer. It took the world by, not by storm, not by much. It didn't succeed <laughs> well. It kind of limped along, and it was marketed as a women's workout beer because if you look at the old ads, it shows a, a lady in good shape in leotard. So it's kind of like, ladies, if you want to drink beer and not get overweight and work out, drink this. So that was just not catching on too much. But Meisterbrow got bought by Miller. Now, Meisterbrow was an old company from Chicago, one of the old, old beer companies. It got bought by Miller in 1972, right? So Miller says, what can we do with this company's badly performing brands, which meant all of them? We know they reformulated Meisterbrow in 1983, and it was fairly successful, and then they came out with a new beer called Meisterbrow Light in 86, I think. Or 80, yeah, something like that. But back to this beer. They, the, the guy that ran Miller, who died about two years ago, he, he was like, no, this beer has potential, but they don't market it right. And it doesn't really taste that good. So he got his Miller scientists on it, diet people, and they reformulated it to where it would taste better. Secondly, it started to test market it as a man's beer with football players and a tough guy beer, even though it's not a tough guy beer at all. So it seemed like people were very favorable towards it. 
1975, they rolled it out. Okay? And we know the history. It revolutionized the beer world. It was like the first big game changer, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it was a big game changer really before uh, the craft beer scene exploded. And it just started, kicked off that light beer revolution. Uh, started, yeah. yeah. You're right. And then uh, other companies were slow to respond. Now, I know Schlitz came out with Schlitz Light in 75. That was never real popular, although they pushed it hard. And then they had a new improved Schlitz Light. And then eventually in 2010, they got rid of Schlitz Light. Mm -hmm. uh, but here's the thing I want to show you real fast. Here's an old can from around 1970, I guess. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, here's the weird thing about this. This ugly yellow can with the red and black trim, it looks like something you get out of the health food store. Now, apparently there was a bunch of different brands called something 96, Falstaff 96, like mm. Wall City 96. Um, think of any old beer brand, you know, like maybe they had Evansville 96. All right. I'm kind of like Bud Select 55 now. Yeah, okay. They market the calories. Yeah, yes. but I'm, what I'm wondering about this, I noticed the number 96. I'm wondering if this was the Meisterbrow Light contract brewed for other companies and they just slapped their label on it. See what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. look at how they describe this beer. Now listen to the description and you're going to start thinking it must be true. One third fewer calories than our regular beer. Now, isn't that the old Miller tagline? A third fewer calories? <clears throat> that does sound familiar, yeah. And a less filling. Less filling, but full flavored. I'm thinking, wow. <clears throat> this must have been the old Meisterbrow light. Okay, so scratch that. But, I mean, not scratch it, but let's put that on the side. But that's making me think that's what that was. Yeah, right. Great taste, less filling. With hmm. one third calories than your regular beer. That's what that old ad used to say. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they came out with Miller Lite in '75, and I remember this was always on Monday Night Football mm -hmm. with all the football and basketball and baseball players. And then it was that the big deal. I don't know. Jeff's having nervous break. The Bristers have nervous breakdown. And then so then uh, <laughs> I'm talking about a very serious subject right now, sir. So then. Um, <laughs> But what happens when you're a big deal? You're going to bring in competition, right? And y'all know who took Miller Light down. Mm-hmm. Budweiser? Light. Budweiser Light. Mm -hmm. Yep. Used in 1982. So that's enough of that. Mm -hmm. Let's get to the backstory. Any other comments about the history part, though? There's still some good commercials out there on YouTube, like the one that John Madden did for Miller Lite. Mm. I need to see that one. They no. had some classic um, commercials. Classic already. Who was it? Remember the one? I think they were uh, Miller Lite. It was uh, they were banned. They were never actually released, and they're pretty much the best commercials I've ever seen. And of yeah, any. I think they got into some trouble because they hired a marketing company that wanted to do edgy stuff and then Miller was like we don't really do edgy too well so yeah <laughs> if you looked at some of the edgy stuff they did in the 90s it didn't go across too well remember those weird LSD type commercials for Miller High Life in the 90s it was sort of like David Lynch type commercials like sort of a racer head type nightmare dystopian society commercials and people were like, what the hell is this? I don't want to live in that kind of world. If that's, what, if that's what High Life's about, I don't want nothing to do with it. No, this is just about being manly and putting butter on everything. That was pretty much the gist of the commercials. They were pretty great. Yeah, and then cooking sausage and having some kind of ma uh, duct tape on your refrigerator. <laughs> but it was like not right. It was like, what is this? Is not the regular. What are they trying to say that you can drink Miller High Life and live in a dingy apartment and have a destroyed life or something? I don't know what. It wasn't like this is a regular man's beer. It was like this is a man 
who lives in a flop house's beer. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I used to watch him with curiosity. Where did this beer with your LSD? <laughs> yeah, it was sort of. It was sort of like a trip, you know. That's what I mean. But um, I guess we better examine this beer. This, yeah. is what, this is what happens when the beer is kind of dull. You talk about all these ancillary things. Um, <laughs> out, out west, what do you westerners think about this beer, the appearance and the aroma? Well, it's obviously it's a very light, very common to a pilsner, very similar to what Coors or Budweiser would look. The head was actually a little bit better than I expected. I didn't really notice, like, heavy lacing or anything. Um, but, I mean, you know, it's very, very clear to be not a dark beer. Very, very light. Yeah. What about the aroma? Corny. Very corny. You get, like, sweet. <clears throat> um, very typical smell. Not anything that really pops out or feels different than, you know, would be very difficult to do a smell test and smell it apart from cores or uh, Well, what, uh, what about you, Keone? We're going to get to you, Jeff. All right, Keone. Um, found this beer to be quite pleasant. Um, it's pretty smooth, kind of like the Miller Genuine Giraffe. I found it to be pretty corny. Had a decent amount of malt I'm getting. Um, or, or I should say okay amount of malt. And there's a very subtle hint of kind of like a citrusy hop. It goes down really clean. I would actually prefer this than Bud Light. But so Coors Light is my favorite out of the light beers, though. Yeah. No offense to you Miller fans out there. Yeah, that's the one my father used to drink all the time was Coors Light. Um, <laughs> um, now, down, you were doing it right, Eric. <laughs> um, now t down to the south I'll give mine real fast and then I'm going to go to two guys because they haven't joined us so long and I'm pretty excited this is the beer that turned me off a of beer from 1986 to 96 okay oh no no joke 10 years dun, dun, dun. well okay real fast when I was a little kid like 3 years old and my parents would let me drink beer it was regular beer right so it was like Miller High Life in the Eric, Eric, take care of the echo. It was Miller High Life, and it was Schlitz, right? So I'm thinking, beer tastes good, and um, I enjoyed it, but as a little kid. So then, 18 years old, in 86, so I'm like, let's, you know, my friends are over, and I'm like, let's drink beer, because that's what you're supposed to do. So my father had Miller Light in the fridge, and I said, let's drink. Well, he wouldn't care, you know, anyway, so um, he was gone somewhere, and so we... We're drinking it, and I remember I opened the can, and I started drinking it, and I was like, oh, this doesn't taste good, you know. It's so, it was so thin, and it tasted like, I don't know, it was like vapid, like there was something wrong. So I just couldn't even finish the can, and then I never drank beer until February 96 after that. It's funny. I have like a very similar story where uh, the very first time I remember tasting beer was... My mom gave me a few sips off uh, Boston Lager, and I, I actually I thought it was intense. Like it was, I was like six at the time. It was like a little too intense for me. But then, just like a year or so later, my uh, my my dad gave me some Coors Light, and my I hated it more than I hated the other stuff. Like I was all like pumped, like okay, this is gonna be a powerful taste explosion. I'm like ready for it now. It's like, and then I had this like light tasting and crap. I'm like, this is just water. I, I didn't even drink the whole glass that he gave me. I was like, no, give me some real beer. I'm seven and I'm picky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, I was kind of disappointed in myself that I let 10 years go by because I could have been trying a bunch of stuff over those years, you know, like, and really gotten into things earlier, but I didn't, you know, and then I remember in 96 I said, okay, People are always drinking beer. Let me see what it's about, and I'll give it a second go. But I didn't buy Light at first. I bought um, High Life, and I brought that home, and I thought, 
okay, this is what I remember as a kid. You know, this was much better. And so I drank that. And then, of course, I went through all the beer brands. And then I, when I got the light, Miller Light, I said, oh, yeah, here's that again. But I, I got used to it. So now the aroma, I find, has got a little, almost like a honey aroma. And um, grain, you know, it's very light. And the appearance, obviously, is golden and clear and bubbly. Um, but a lot of people ask me, when did you go from light beers to craft beers? I say it's the opposite with me. I went from like craft beers. I had to get used to light beers. I, I didn't have I didn't have any trouble getting used to uh, Scotch ales and all of that. Okay, now Brandon, and then the Brister. Well, uh, Miller Light. Uh, there's not much to be said about it, but like I said, I get that grain husk aroma and some of that sweet smell. I mean, the flavor profile, it's pretty thin, but that's what it's supposed to be. It's a low-calorie beer, so you're not going to get a very uh, malt uh, flavor, even adjunct flavor. I mean, it's there, but it's it's very light in the flavor. <coughs> it's going to be really easy to pound, so I can see the, the popularity there. It's very easy to pound this, but uh, personally... One of my least favorite light beers. Yeah. Uh, so, but it's not bad. I'd recommend it, but at the same time, uh, it's one of my least favorite light beers. You think Miller High Life Light is a better value? I would agree with you on that one. Uh, Miller High Life Light, definitely. Uh, I would agree. Okay, now we have Jean. We're going to get to you in a little bit, Jean. I'm glad you joined us, man. Oh. Now, uh, he's from Alabama now. The Brister. You've been drinking Miller Light one after the other, so you're getting more of like a a saturation um, experience with it, <laughs> which is, in, you know, uh, you want to get deep into the experience. So what about the aroma and the appearance for you? Uh, the aroma, you said something like you can <coughs> uh, sense a sweet honey. Is that what you said? Yeah. You, when, whenever you said that, I took a, a long sniff, and I think I smell a little bit of that sweet honey thing, too. Uh, as far as a taste, I mean, it, it does its purpose. It's a light beer. There's a almost an aftertaste of hops. I think that's what I'm tasting. A little bit of corniness. Other than that, it's a very crisp, crisp, clean, light lager, and you can drink a lot of it. Yeah, I also get a very hint, a very small hint of that honey too when I smell, took a deep breathe of it. Yeah, it, yeah, I never thought of that before, and then I really started. Yeah, me neither. I would have never it. thought of it actually. <laughs> when I it hit me when I poured it straight in, and those esters got released. I said, "Honey, I know it's <laughs> obviously no honey, but I think that's the barley malt juice, or whatever you call it." Barley there's malt. a unique sweetness, so it's very, very slight. But it's, it is there. How would you set up? TV ramble. Yes, sir. Um. You know, Miller Lite is what it is. Um, it's a it's a good, refreshing, you know, light lager um, of the three. And I know my beloved, she swears by Bud Light, um, which I don't, but um, but she'll tolerate Miller Lite. And I think of the the two, I'll probably pick Miller Lite over Bud Light. But um, oh, it's now hold on, hold on. Right now, we're just doing the aroma and the appearance. Oh, okay, my bad, my bad, my bad. Um, typical lager smell to it. Um, nothing really special. It smells like your 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 all your other uh, uh, light lagers. So nothing really to add on to that. What everyone else has said. So gotcha. Um, and then we have Eric Fraunfelter. What do you think, uh, um, Thomas Metal uh, Massachusetts Beer Reviews? Now over on the Massachusetts Beer Review channel, if any of you want to go over there, I suggest it. Yeah, um, I did do the light lager challenge of the three of the Miller, the Bud, and the Coors Light, and immediately, and immediately, in smelling that beer, I could instantly tell that this beer, I could tell it was Miller Light. But more to the point here for the Miller Light examination, I could, I can tell that this isn't your average standard run of the mill kind of a kind of a light American lager because it has. It has the base ingredients. It utilizes in the smell. What I'm trying to say is, in the smell, 
it has the the um, standard ingredients to beer. You can smell you can smell the malt. You can smell a, a light maltiness. You can smell a little bit of a bready, almost a light yeasty kind of a flavor. There is a small amount of like a uh, florally, almost spicy kind of a hop aroma to it. But then again, at the same time, it has that sweet grainy note, and it's not really anything out of the ordinary for a light lager. But it has good quality ingredients that you can smell, and you can tell that it was uh, it smells like a good beer should smell. Yeah, they yeah they say on the website they use hop quality barley malt and hops. Well, they have enough money that they could buy them. You know, I mean, they don't use a lot of it, but. Um, and you know it has won gold medals at the world uh, the Great American Beer Festival. It's a well-made beer. I mean, that's you could tell it's a well-made beer. But I'm a lot like you. Light beer is not my preference. No, no, but it doesn't mean it's bad because it's not our preference. I never buy light beer except for special purposes like tonight. But you know, I don't buy butter beans, but that doesn't mean they're bad and people shouldn't eat them. Exactly. I, like um, I mean, sometimes it's, it's sometimes it's it, it's helpful. Sometimes it's helpful to look at a beer style all by itself and, and try and try to say, as I guess for tonight's purposes, as a light lager, I would personally say this is a very, very, very good example of one of those. Yeah. But as a beer overall, you may have a different preference altogether. But as a light lager and as an American lager, I think this is a very good choice to me personally. Yeah. No, I I can't argue with that. Now we're gonna go into the taste, and then after you give us the taste and the body and the finish, and we know how that's gonna be. But after that, tell us if you would buy it again. So we'll go to the same people in that order. You all remember the order, so. So, um, the Miller Light to me, I find it as a light beer, absolutely it is superior to most of the light. Hold on a second. Let me. Uh, Who's getting stabbed? Okay. Right. Okay. What now? <laughs> All right. So, uh, I mean, if you're going to compare this to uh, like Keystone Light or most other light beers, I would definitely prefer this over it. I think it's superior to uh, Coors Light as well. Um, you know, it's on a level. I, you know, pretty close to Bud Light. I would say. Uh, the flavor. I mean. There's definitely you get that that bite of wheat as well. Like it doesn't seem like Pabst Blue Ribbon almost has more of a bite to the beer than Miller Lite does. Um, and I just think uh, it's a very good. If I I wouldn't buy it again because I don't drink light beer. I drink heavy ass beer like stone stone stuff. But but if I was gonna drink light beer, this would probably be what I would grab. Someone told me to buy a light beer. I would go out and I'd buy Miller Light. I'd probably prefer it over over Bud Light as well. So I mean, for Bud beer, that's my call for sure. I think it's it's good and uh, it's actually a lot better than I expected it to be, and a lot better than the reputation to suggest. Uh, it's very drinkable. It's, it's, so I approve for light beer. I think it's good. Okay, that's that's a very fair uh, assessment. Of that. Now, um, let's see. Uh, Keone, um, what's all that noise? Oh, I mean, is it coming from my end? It might. Who is it? Is it coming from me? It might be. It might be because it sounds like you're um brushing some uh suede shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Which not right, necessarily me... what viewers want to hear. Now, um, Keone? How about now? A little better? I yeah. think so. A lot better. I'll, okay. I'll, do the, I'll do the reverse because I messed up last time. All right. The color is very clear and clean. It has a very grainy smell to it. And would I buy it again? Uh, I don't know. If I was going to go buy Miller, I think I'd rather go with Miller High Life or even Genuine Draft because it's just a little better in my opinion. What if you were, for some bizarre reason, you wanted to buy a light beer? Yeah, I would have to be buy a light beer. It would be kind of a hard decision for me between this and Coors Light because I really like the sweetness that Coors Light has. But this is a very good beer. It's very 
well balanced compared to like Bud Light. No offense to you guys out there, but I'm not a big Bud Light fan. Neither okay. am I. Wait, 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 wait. Jean Pierre, you said it's a shame that Paps Blue Ribbon Light doesn't exist. Oh, it does exist. Well, I don't get in my area, unfortunately. Just, just PBR. I didn't know it existed either. You gotta go to Lafayette, Louisiana. Go to Lafayette, Louisiana. It'd be you never see so much Paps Blue Ribbon Light in Old Milwaukee Light. Wait, wait. I see Old Milwaukee Light. Uh, I do, here, but I don't see Paps Blue Ribbon Light. So I might have to look. Yeah. It's hard for me to find even Old Milwaukee. Where I live, it's mainly non-alcoholic. Yeah, that's pretty, uh, uh, Yeah, that's a common one. That is a common one now. That well, that's kind of light, right? Yeah. That's, not, that's very light. <laughs> they, don't that. they don't sell that here anymore. Um, now let's see. Um, uh, Brandon, your assessment of the flavor and finish, and would you have it again? Well, the flavor, I mean, its you can tell it's a well-made beer when you drink it. It's like you said, it's lighter on the flavor as it is lighter on the aroma, which is what you expect. It's not, uh, like I said, it's 96 calories, so what do you expect? It's not going to be a heavily flavored beer. Now, that being said, uh, would I buy it again? Um, uh, like I said, if I can get a good sale on it, maybe, because I prefer to buy a light beer for the price, and... Uh, there are better tasting light beers uh, that are cheaper, like say Old Milwaukee Light or Milwaukee's Best Light, for example, or even uh, Miller High Life Light, which is uh, cheaper than the Miller Light for some strange reason. Uh, but it's a good beer for a light beer. It's a good beer, so I'm, I'd recommend it. Yeah, and I'll say the same thing. It, I don't really like any light products, not just beer. I don't like light mayonnaise. I don't like light anything. Okay, so, so, no, I wouldn't buy it again because I don't like light products. It, it, why can't you just eat less of the full flavor product, right? I know, yeah. It's like just put less mayonnaise if you have a weight problem. Why do you got to buy that horrible light mayonnaise that tastes <laughs> bad? Now, this beer doesn't taste bad. It's fine, but I don't want to buy a beer that's just fine. I mean, yeah, they use good ingredients. Yeah, they do a great job with it. Yes, I can understand why it won gold medal in the light beer category. All of that. If somebody wanted to drink light beer and they drank Miller Lite the rest of their life, I'm sure they wouldn't go wrong with it. But my only opinion is that I don't like light beers in general, so it's kind of like a ridiculous question for me and all y'all, it seems like, because we don't like the style, but the style exists. Okay, Jeff, the brister. Uh, adding on to your point, you know, it's funny, like, people will buy light beer, but they'll, they'll buy light beer for the purpose of getting drunk. It's like, why buy light beer if you plan on drinking, like, 12 of them? Exactly. Yeah. Right, you exactly. defeat the purpose of light. Like, they, they'll go to Taco Bell and get a taco salad with extra sour cream and everything. It's like, lady, you're not going to lose weight, okay? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, let me get that double quarter pounder meal. Oh, a Diet Coke. Yeah. And an apple pie. There's no sense to that. Cheers to that. But, so, Jeff, you're going to say you wouldn't buy it again, but for a light beer, you think it's okay. And it does what it, it – it, it serves its purpose. It's a light beer, um, adjunct lager, very uh, crisp and clean taste and finish. I'd buy it again if I was hosting like a Super Bowl party or something. If people, you know, that, that drink light beer want to come over and drink, because uh, I know a lot of people drink Miller Lite or Bud Light, but I wouldn't buy it for myself. I don't usually buy light beer myself either. Yeah. So if you came to New Orleans and we were walking around in the French Quarter, you would drink a Mickey's like I did last time. I would. I would definitely drink a Mickey's over anything that says light. Yeah. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> I like it. Because when John Sharon came to New Orleans earlier this year, and we were walking around the French Quarter, I bought this huge can of Mickey's for a dollar. Damn. The 25-ounce can? Um, I think it was, yeah, 24-ounce. But um, it was like it had flavor, you know. It was like, no. Yeah. Okay, but anyway, um, and he was drinking up. He was drinking like a lot of stuff, but um, <laughs> Woo, Johnny. he was Johnny drinking mostly Coors Light, you know, to start it off. But he said it was a rough drive back home, man. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, I was like, 
But they had a good time, though. I can assure you that. But anyway, um, <clears throat> back to this. Um, mm -hmm. John, TV um, ramble. Yeah, I'm at. Um, I, I'll as I mentioned earlier. Um, oh wait, wait, one more thing. I'm sorry. Let me interrupt you real fast. One more thing. I'm sorry. Go ahead. The Brister. What do you think about this bottle having the date on it? You know what? If I if, if I see something that ain't got no date on the bottle, man, I don't, I don't review it. Oh yeah, great. Right. You know, yeah. you know what I mean. You know, you know what I'm saying, guys. Got <laughs> <laughs> to put the date on the put bottle. The freaking date on the bottle. Guys. No, I'm just asking that question because they put the date on there, and is it that hard to put a date on the bottle? It's not hard. Right, to put right on the side, side guys. I think he's. I think Greg said very, very recently he's not gonna buy beer anymore if it doesn't have a date on it. He won't even buy it. I think we should talk about that for about eight minutes. But we don't have time. <laughs> well, we don't have time. We don't have time. But that is a very serious problem in this world. Mm -hmm. but, sure is, man. But back. <laughs> if it doesn't have a date. It loses the letter grade, guys. Right. I do agree with the contention, though. Actually, I. I I make fun and all, but I do agree with that. I mean, I don't know what's so they're all going hard about putting a Best Buy date. Why that is difficult? But uh, for a big brewery, but yeah, that's you. <clears throat> anyway, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry I interrupted you, but I could not pass that up. <laughs> okay, not a problem. Back to Jean. Um, well, um, what can I say? You know, I I'll buy it like I, as the guy said, just to. I'll bring it to a cookout. I'll bring it to a barbecue. You know, whatever you know, you know, sporting events going on. I'll I'll bring it. If um, I'm I'm like like you. I'm not a big light drinker. Um, PBR, Milwaukee's Best, something like that. And I think Milwaukee's Best light is a, a lot better to me. And you and if you want to look at the ABV on some of these beers, guys, I mean, there's really not much difference. I mean, one of them is four point what two, and the other one is what. Uh, maybe what, maybe four or five, four point five. Really, not much difference between, you know, the ABV on some of these from from their big brother, the the premiums to the to the regular bills, whatever. <laughs> so, um, I rather have uh, I rather have a Budweiser, whatever, uh, than I would get this. But um, it's okay. Yeah, look at the look at the uh, calorie count on uh, I think it's Bud Ice, is like one twenty five. Yeah. And like, they call that makes you feel really good. Just say it. He's like, what? A 40 what? now make you feel really good. Just say it. Right. And I'm enjoying this pumpkin beer right about now. Mr. O'Fallon. I'm about to start my Thanksgiving meal right a little bit early. <laughs> I can't even get that beer. Now, um, let's see. Going on to Massachusetts Beer Reviews. Massachusetts Beer Reviews is going to... Uh, Hmm. I you know what? I I will recommend this beer. I don't know if I would highly, you know, recommend this beer, but I would strongly recommend that you uh you all go out and get this beer. My personal preference when it comes to the uh pale type lagers is to go towards the the European continent and try things from Carlsberg and Beck's and uh, Heineken. And Grolsch and those kind of beers, even even uh, Samuel Smith's organic lager is pretty good too. But um, I just find that the Europeans got the flavor thing down right. They got that lightness, crispness. It's got a lot of flavor. You can taste the hops. You can taste really good multi flavor. And as far as the light beer category is concerned, I think this is one of the best tasting beers on the market as a light beer is concerned. Because it, because like I said. Mm. Earlier in the examination, when I was smelling the beer, just like in the just like in the smell, when you taste the beer, you can taste the the base ingredients that make up beer: hops, water, yeast, and malt. You can taste all those things separately, and they're done really, really well as far as light beer is concerned. They're not really um, over the top and extraordinary in flavor, and you do get obviously the that corn flavor that an adjunct lager has in it, but for just a little old light beer, I would definitely recommend this one, and I would pick it up again. Yeah, and, and what the scientists say is that, food scientists, they say that light lager is the hardest style of beer to make. 
I got to imagine that it's, that it is one of the harder styles to make because because especially when it comes to the the, the major breweries around the world, you got to be very very consistent because you have so many millions of people that buy your beer. If it starts to taste off one year, people are going to stop buying your beer and you're going to lose money. Plus, it's so light. It's so light that if there's any kind of off, you're going to pick it up. Mm-hmm. Bud like, Ice 40 ounce. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> hey, you know, well, um, we already examined Bud Ice, but... Um, that was a good beer. Yeah. We get them in the brown bottles here, in the 18-ounce brown bottles. Um, I, oh, I, try to avoid, no. I try to avoid clear bottles of Bud Ice. I've had too many bad experiences with Bud Ice clear bottles. Or, oh, no, they're big uh, in Mississippi. They're big in Mississippi across the border. Yeah. Mont Point, Pascagoula. I could get plenty of uh, eighteen ounce brown bottles. Mm -hmm. That's like everywhere here. But um, mm. the problem is, it got so popular that the price went up. They used to be ninety nine cents a bottle, but then everybody started buying them. So now it's like a, a stupid price. Um, <laughs> so people are saying here on this group they wouldn't buy it again because they wouldn't buy light beer in general again. <laughs> But I would I buy it for other people, not for myself. Like if I was going to a party. And you yeah. knew they had but you knew they had light beer drinkers, they would be like all excited because you brought Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that was a fascinating um, examination, I thought. And um, next week's gonna be a real problem because we're looking at a beer that I bet you hardly anybody's gonna be able to find. That's so depressing. Uh, oh yes. I got mine. I got ripped off, but I got mine, and it's called Presidente, and it's from the Dominican Republic. And El this, Presidente. Yeah, and this is the 80th anniversary of the beer. Hmm. Yep, 80th anniversary. Um, and there's a new Presidente on the market that I'm dying to find, and I might go make a little trip down to where I know I can. And it's called Presidente Black. And it's six percent malt liquor, President. Wow. Is okay. it a black uh, malt liquor, or is it a, like a black lager type malt liquor or something? Yeah. To the photos I saw on the Presidente website look like regular old, look like King Cobra to me, but they call it Presidente Black. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, and they had a major launch party for it, and I was looking at the video. I mean, the uh, there's videos too. I was looking at the photos, and um, I said, "Man, boy, I'd like to try that thing." Um, did but, someone just said King Cobra? <laughs> yeah. So got, okay, so we got Presidente coming up on December 2nd. Then we have Old Stock Ale from North Coast Brewing on December 9th. How you love that? Interesting. Yeah. Now get into barley wine time. Ooh. Then yeah. on December 16th, we got Old Foghorn from Anchor. That's um in the uh, uh, beer cellar. More barley wine. Sweet. Yeah. Then on December twenty third, we're back to basics with natural light. What you know about that? Natural light, more light beer. Light. Mm. The fascinating world of light beer. Natural light is super easy for me to get, and it's super cheap too. Yeah. yeah and if somebody tells me I can't make it tonight, pack. if somebody tells me I can't make it tonight. Because I can't find natural light. I'm gonna know they're lying. Right, if you tell me you can't find uh, Presidente, I'll believe you, but if you tell me you can't find Miller Light or Natural Light, you're a liar. Um and then on to close out the year of twenty fifteen, we have the celebrated world famous Cronenborg. 1664. Ah. Uh, Cronenberg. Okay. Owned by Carlsberg Group, believe it or not. Isn't That's a great beer. I really like that beer, actually. Yeah, Cronenberg. That is a great beer. It's a beer. Yes. And, People are friends. And, and you know, Eric, Eric, I think that in 2016, we really do need to get together and examine Carlsberg Elephant. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, buddy. Who agrees with that? Interesting. I can't get it, but that's technically a malt liquor, right? Yeah. That's it right on the bottom. Malt liquor, it's 7% alcohol. Yeah. You know, Jay, when you and uh, Marie were talking about um, um, about buying singles and things like that, you know, 
a lot of these beers that I, you guys are mentioning, I do see, but you know, some of these pack, some of these stores, like there's one store where it has a a plethora of craft beers. Um, you know, unfortunately, they don't sell singles, so I'm kind of, you know, like, you know, in a crosshair, stuck between, you know, do I pay, you know, such and such amount for that, or do I just say, you know, screw it, you know, never mind. And the other place that I know I could get singles of it. And maybe twelve ounce bottles would be Rouse's in Mobile, but but they don't have the, the, the names of some of the stuff that you're listing. And I'm yeah, having to like, make that. I know, but you got to make that New Orleans ride because if you come to New yeah, Orleans, I'm think so. I th I think I, I might need to do that. Probably maybe around New Year's, you know. Just you go to Rouse's downtown on Barone Street. You're gonna lose your mind. I'm telling you, you're gonna lose your mind. Yeah. You're gonna lose your mind up in there, up in there. Um, look at look at the state I'm living. I'm living just just Bible Belt, Alabama. You know. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> hey, I read the Bible every morning, but right. I can still go to Rouse's and get mines. I can still go to Rouse's in New Orleans and get mines. All right, now um, but uh, but yeah, you got to make that little New Orleans ride, and I'm gonna meet you out there, and we got oh so many things to do. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. You gonna have that forty ounce of Schlitz malt liquor in your in your hand? That. Yeah. All right, because John John's been loving. He's been wishing for that. The VSL. Um, no, no, not the VSL. I would say the uh, the Red Bull and the um, the red and also the ice. I've been wanting to try. Yeah, well, you're in the wrong place, but I can get you the Blue Bull. Okay. Blue Bull's fantastic. Yes. Best malt liquor I on the market. Agree. I had that. The Blue Bull is very good. It's the best malt liquor on the market. Yes. Wouldn't you all agree with that? I still like Private Stock when it was around. Yeah, Private Stock was the best yep. one. Yeah. Private I saw stock plenty of that in Virginia. A Private lot of that. Stock, Private, wait, stock. Wait, Private Stock is Ooh. good, but you, you keep drinking it, it gets a little too rich, and you start getting a little sick. Um, they're right. They're right. They're right. I know it's gone now, but they did have that European flavor. But yes. it's got to be the imported taste. Little... Yes, the imported taste. That's right. Yeah, the imported flavor, but it I got it a little. Made... Yeah. yeah, I think it was made somewhere in Massachusetts, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Well, anyway, this huh. is. We can go on and on and on till the break of dawn, but we better get off. So thanks, folks, for joining this video production. Happy Thanksgiving, Thank you everybody. Later, everybody. Hey, Enjoy your turkey. Yeah, and hey, don't overdo it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Happy don't overdo it. And y'all come back now.